Respectable viewers, once again, we are back with our studies in business communication. We've looked at communication, what it's like, or what is communication. We've looked at the stages, the key terms in communication. Today, we are looking at the types of communication. Types of communication is categorized into three groups. And the first one has to do with the number of people The number of people involved in communication is important as far as types of communication is concerned. Now, in the number of people, we'll be looking at three types. The first type has to do with intra-personal communication. Now, the word intra has to do with one speaking to oneself. In literature, we call it soliloquy, where one is talking to himself. In fact, in intrapersonal communication, it has to do with the mind or if you like the thought. You are thinking aloud. Just imagine Lewin in a movie. Could you encounter with this guy is, is, is talented, he's good. Lewin will be seated one time and be asking him himself, So you see that he's speaking to himself. He is the sender of the message and the recipient of the message at the same time, even though he's speaking to himself, he's alone on stage. I saw a video on social media recently, Otel, that fat guy. He was asking God, sitting alone. Hey, I am not He is talking to himself. He is sad, he is somber, because he thinks that things are not going right the way he expects it. We call it intrapersonal communication. Communication within oneself. Communication that does not do with two people. Remember when we were looking at the definition of communication, we said that it has to do with two people, bipolar and more. So if one is talking to himself, we see that to be what? Intrapersonal communication. So somebody will ask the question, okay, if the person is speaking to himself, then do we have a response in communication? That has to do with intrapersonal communication. The point here is yes and no. Yes, because once Lewin asks himself the question, hey, many Just imagine that you lost your iPhone, the newest iPhone in the system. You begin to ask yourself questions. Ah, as a micro class me call you. There be as a majan of ye. Ah, Anna, a war hall. There be as a micro half or third year new. There be. So you see that many things happen in your mind at the same time. You are not talking to anyone. You don't expect anyone to ask you now. Mommy, that if anybody wants to ask you, yes, that is the person's business. But the point is, you are having an intrapersonal communication. Just imagine that your last money is missing. You can see how lugubrious you'll be. Asking yourself several questions simultaneously. Let's go away. You see, you are talking to yourself and you are even replying to the message at the same time. But because communication has to do with two people, even if you reply to the message, we don't see it to be a, a response or a reply because communication has to do with two people. So you may reply to the message, yet we don't see that to be a reply. Since this type of communication involves one person, intra-personal communication. Then, we can also look at inter- interpersonal communication. And let's take note of this. 
There is nothing like interschools. There is nothing like inter inter horse games. Inter schools games. They are wrong. Adjectives are not plural. So you don't add S to the hyphenated adjective. We call it compound adjective. Inter school games. Inter hall games. Don't add the S to it. So we have interpersonal communication. What do we mean by interpersonal communication? We are talking about communication involving two people. The sender and the recipient. So if you have a lecturer in a, in a, in a lecture hall, in an auditorium, a pastor in a church, all these are examples of interpersonal communication. Why are we saying that? Fine. Considering the teacher or the lecturer, he is the sender of the message. Now the class, even if there are 1,500 students, the class is seen as one. That is why we call something collective nouns in English. Collective nouns has to do with an entire group seen as one. So the class is one group and the lecturer is another group. So two people are involved in this conversation. We call it interpersonal communication. Obinim will be in his church, Reverend Obofo, Duncan Williams and Co. will be in church preaching. Now, he is preaching to his congregation. They are preaching to their congregation. The congregation is seen as a collective noun, one group. While the pastor, the man of God, is also one group. Or if you like, a person. So two people are involved here in this conversation. Or communication, sorry. So as the pastor preaches about forgiveness, as he preaches about loving your neighbor as you love yourself, all this is saying is going to land on each of the heads in the church. But all of these heads are seen as one. So this communication is timed, sorry, is termed as interpersonal communications. Two people involved with communication. In an interview, we have the panel. Then we also have the group of interviewees. So we have the interviewers, interviewee, two groups. The panel as one. Then the interviewees as another group. Two people involved. We call it interpersonal communication. If you go for counseling, you sit with your pastor. He's telling you what to do, what not. Communication between you and your pastor, the two of you, is interpersonal communication. And it's the same as you and, uh, I mean, the church as a group, the congregation, and the pastor. It's the same thing. So whether it's a, it's a counseling, and you are sitting in front of the pastor, or the pastor preaching in church to all of you, it is interpersonal communication. Because the church is a, is a group, and then the pastor is another. Interpersonal communication. Then the last one, we call it mass. Public. Or impersonal communication. Mass communication. The word mass is coming from what? People. Mass. Public, and in fact, it is impersonal. Impersonal in that it is not referring to one person, just like intrapersonal. Let's use the same examples we used in interpersonal communication and see some difference. Just imagine that in Obinim's church, in Obafor's church, in Duncan Williams' church, as they are preaching, they connect them digitally. They all have TV stations today. So if it is a live program. And while Obofo is preaching in his church and is connected to several people, it is mass communication because several people are consuming the message at the same time. If I'm, I sit down and I'm seeing Obinim's TV or the Sweet TV 
and the rest of the TVs we have, GTV. Whatever information I receive, someone too is in Tema, another is in Takradi, some is in Accra, Obinsu Namkumasi. We are all receiving the message on the TV station at the same time. So Obinim is preaching in his church. In the church, he's communicating with the church members. So it's interpersonal, two people, the church and himself. But once we have the TV station connected, this time it ceases to be interpersonal communication. It is mass because the TV station is seen by several people at the same time and even across the borders of Ghana. So we have people in Togo and other countries seeing this particular TV. If GTV is telecasting news, disseminating news, TV3, name them Adum TV and the radio stations we have. If you go to Kumasi, there is this man we call Kenebel. And in KNUST and other, other places in Kumasi, 7 o'clock, we will never by, bypass them. They have to listen to Kenebel. Just say, the guy is good and people want to hear him. So Kenebel is in uh, Silver FM. What is he doing? He's giving us news in sports. Several people in Kumasi and across borders of Kumasi are getting the message at the same time. So the communication that Kineben is passing is mass communication. It's public communication because the members who are consuming the message are many. It's a, in fact, mass communication is a communication on a large scale. Could you remember Moisha? When Moisha found himself at CNN, the little thing this lady said, the next morning, Oh, sorry, the next minute, several people got the information and they were trolling her. Some were also liking her, others disliking. We are not concentrated. We are not concerned on the likes and dislikes of people. Our point is, several people got the message at the same time. Because CNN is across the world. Everyone gets information from them. Let Aquapin Polo, or what's the name? Aquapin Polo, Rosemon Brown. Write something on social media right now and let's see what will happen. Let her post her pictures. And you will see that in a split second, the whole Ghana will be enjoying the message. At the same time, mass communication. Just imagine um, Lewin. Recently, Patapa song, Sko Patomana, Tom Patopat, and you see that. In a split second, everybody got the message and their social media. So all the social media platforms are for what? Public communication. Radio station, TV station, they are for mass communication or impersonal communication. When Lewin said that, um, I don't think far, I don't think madness. Can you imagine the number of people who got the message at the same time? Even if not at the same time, you receive it an hour ago, someone two hours ago, another person to one week time. Remember that the message is passed on to several people. And that is what you mean by mass communication. Estimable viewers, these are what you mean by types of communication. And the first one is the number of people. The next one is the purpose of communication. Purpose of communication. So, types of communication are grouped into categories. And the first category is the number of people involved we looked at. Now we are on the purpose of communication. Now, we can look at social purposes. An example is gossip. My mother, my father, my colleagues out there. Gossip is a social purpose for which communication takes place. Gossip is not structured. Gossip is not organized. But I tell you, before you realize, you've written the whole of Akiola and approaches combined. 
Gossip is not organized. It is not structured. It is not structured. And it is not planned. You don't plan gossip. I don't remember the last time a group of ladies or a group of guys sat and planned for gossip. We don't plan it. It comes. Just imagine this lady passing by and guys, one will tap the shoulder, the shoulder of the friend. Look at that lady. Oh, me the me. Oh, no, she's a 90 year Oh, me the me the me. She's a tall lady. She's a thin baby. And some ladies can gossip that you can't just imagine. Gossip, ah. What's me think of Gonsa Sama? What's me shut down for Nino? You know, say, oh, she's a thin baby. Only we read the asset Wagadugua. Hey, Coconsanti, obeying me a Wagadugua. A equation. You don't plan it. So once you have said this, your, your friends around will say, Ampo, they tell you they are never crowd. Now we say, Oh, me, they are not going to be Now they will be. So you see that any message can come in at any time. They can chip in anything at any time. After gossiping about that lady, somebody else comes to mind. Hey, now you are going to say, Now you are going to put your book Facebook. Now you are going to be saying, Now then, I mean, before you realize, they are talking about. So they can talk from cock crow till the chicken go home to roost. They can be gossiping from cock crow until the cows come home. Because gossip is not structured. Gossip is not organized. It's not planned. So you can say anything at any time. It's not formal. Now, we have business purpose. We communicate for business reasons. You want to transact a business. And even this business we are talking about, you use what? Language, communication to, com to communicate. If you are writing a, a CV, an application letter, a memo, a rejoinder, all these are planned, they are structured. Who paid you, man? Do you just want to write something on paper and send it? Hello? You can use one week in preparing your application letter, giving it to, I mean, think tanks to read through for you. We call it proofreading because you don't want even punctuation mark to be a problem on your paper because you need a job business wise. So what do you do with business purposes? You structure your writing. You structure, even if you have to speak, you structure it, you plan it. I remember this man, Dr. Richard Amakuba. One of the best political science lecturers KNUSD has ever experienced. This man will be called by TV stations, TV3, GTV, Adum TV, and other radio stations, asking about his take on the economy. And this man will take his time. And even when he's speaking, you can, you can feel paragraphs in his statements. There are people who talk anyhow. Or far. Oh, uh -huh. This man will take his time and analyze issues. He will take his time. And so when he's speaking, fire. He's a generalist of his own. He speaks sense. Analyzing the, 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 his speech from one paragraph to another. And you can even tell his introduction. You can tell his body. You can tell his conclusion, even in his speech. Big people do that. I mean, people who know about communication do that. You don't just communicate anyhow. Yeah, I'm not talking about Dr. Richard Makuba alone. Mahama himself. When Mahama is talking, eh, we come better. His English is edible. Mahama is good at convincing people. He is good at many things. And one of such things has to do with his, his oratory skills. The way he organizes his speech, I rather will come better. President Akufuado, when he's talking, Baumia and Co. Just say, they will take their time. And so you see that this is a president. These are presidents. Ghanaian presidents can speak. No wonder we have been following them like that. So you see, the point is that they are communicating business. When Akufuado is speaking to a group of people, campaign or whatever, Mahama and the rest, they know that they are speaking business, not social. So they know what they are saying at what time. They know what they, they have to say. What they don't have to say. Business people. They plan it in their head. We also have um, economic purposes.
strictly business. When you are doing business, you communicate. But this communication has to do with um, how do you, economy, economic money. I'm selling something. You want to buy it at this price. I told you no. It is rather at this particular price. Whatever information we exchange between ourselves is economic purpose. Money. We have cultural purposes. I am a Krobo. I am an Akan. I am a Fanti. In fact, I am an ordinary. And in social studies, we call this ethnocentrism, where one feels that each tribe, each ethnic group, is above all others. Ethnocentrism. That is not our concentration. That is not our business. Our business is that, as I am a Krobo, as I am a Nodna, as I am a Gan, as I am an Eve, and I'm communicating to someone who is not of my tribe, we try to exchange culture. What I do, I tell my friend who is an Eve. What I do, I tell my friend who is an Ashanti. What he does, he also tells me. So the communication we are having is for cultural purposes. These are purposes of communication. And it's under category, under types of communication. In the way the day